All right, guys, welcome in to the press room at the 2023 World of Concrete Convention here. We are joined by Eric Farabee, pronouncing that correctly, yeah. and he's with the American Concrete Paving Association. Thanks for joining us, sir. Happy to be here. And to recap, he gave a talk bright and early this morning about achieving carbon neutrality. Obviously, carbon neutrality is the hot button topic that we've talked about many times on this podcast and throughout the industry. But I was interested in, in your in your speech, in your presentation, and I wanted to elaborate on the different types or the different methods that we can achieve carbon neutrality. Everyone wants to talk about, like, if you use less cement, that'll bring your carbon emissions down. Well, obviously, but that might not be the most sustainable or efficient way to do it. You mentioned social, environmental, and economic impacts, and there's different ways that, that they all kind of factor into carbon neutrality. So um, if you would kind of give a brief synopsis of, of what I just said in a much more, um, much more elaborate, eloquent way. Yeah, sure. Um, our sustainability white paper is really focused on all the different sides of sustainability, the social side, the economic side, and the environmental side. And everybody wants to get to carbon neutrality and try to reduce our carbon footprint, but there are other factors. The main factor that really drives most decisions still is the economic side of things, the cost side of things. And so we try to at least note that and understand the limitations there and what really needs to be brought into the system, which is competition. We need competition to truly get good economic sustainability. Now, on the carbon side, on the carbon neutrality side, there's stuff that we can do fairly quickly and easily to help reduce our emissions. One of them is making optimized mixes. Sometimes it's lowering cement. Sometimes it's just optimizing your aggregation, but really it's about making sure that we get long-term durability, good performance out of that concrete. And especially on the pavement side, it's looking at how thick our pavements are and are they gonna last however long we need them to last. So combine that, round it out with the other benefits of concrete throughout the life cycle. And you know we can make good concrete infrastructure that's built to last and give us good performance and hopefully lower emissions to the point where eventually we can get down to carbon neutrality. Not there yet, but I believe we'll get there at some point. Well, and, and it takes buy-in from the whole industry, and the industry is huge, right? So, um, you know, doing this work, gaining all of the data that you need to gain in order to produce a, a white paper such as you did, what is, to put it in layman's terms, what do you see as maybe the, the least connected sector of the industry? Where do we need to work on the most? Is it is it the, the ready mix provider? Is it the aggregate companies, cement companies, testing labs? Like where, is there, is there a link that we can easily and quickly strengthen to make this um, endeavor m possible or, or quicker, yeah. more efficient? How, how do we get there faster? I, Correct. I mean, yeah, that's always a great question. When it comes down to it, you know, I've seen a lot of people from all across the industry doing everything that they can. Cement companies I know are all on board, and a lot of the ready-mix guys have come along as well. But one of the things that I've seen that I think can really go a long way is just kind of working with agencies to help them better understand that the decisions that they make have impacts too. And I think that they're starting to see that more and more. The Federal Highway Administration is really trying to get them to start quantifying on their side. Industry has been pushing for quantification for a long time with I think cement companies have been doing EPDs for a long time now. Ready mix side is starting to do a lot more of it as well. But the agencies kind of have to be the ones saying, hey, we want this. We want to see it. We want to get down there and also recognize that when they put out, when they start doing pavement designs and thinking about strategy selection like this, that they have a great impact on that as well. And they can optimize that too. So kind of getting their buy-in is one of the things that I think we're working towards. And one of the problems is, Obviously, this is something that they don't deal with all the time, right. and they, like everybody, are you know, short-staffed, and so they're working on how do we do this and still do everything else we do. So, yeah. It's well, a big well, question. Well, speaking of that, I mean, sometimes there is some crossover between things you can do to uh, achieve carbon neutrality are also things you can do to achieve a better mix overall. And you talked about that uh, today with uh, performance-engineered mixtures. Um, using SEMs, proper gradation of materials is something I don't think people put enough emphasis on sometimes. Um, and then obviously the Portland limestone cement has become a huge topic and, and people are really starting to, at least from what I've seen, really starting to adopt that wholesale, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, just jumping in feet first, and which is interesting to see that anybody can do that in the concrete industry, especially nowadays. It, it's quite surprising. 
Um, but have you, have you seen that to where, you know, you're making these mix design changes to make a better pavement mix, to achieve carbon neutrality, but at the same time, it's benefiting the entire industry? Yeah, I mean, most, so the performance engineer mixture stuff, it wasn't really, it wasn't really brought about by trying to get to carbon neutrality or trying to re even reduce our carbon. It was really about trying to get durability, trying to make sure that when we place down a concrete pavement and say it's going to last 30 years, that we don't have, you know, material related distress in 15. Right. And so it's really looking at that. And during the process, you know, a lot of it was optimizing our aggradations and trying to get through that. And then also looking at our cement content and how can we optimize that and what are the benefits of supplementary cementition, cementitious materials to really bring that durability along. And so once you combine all that, it starts to give us a much better mix durability wise, but also on the carbon side. And then um, combining that with the last few years of you know, getting PLCs more adopted and more included all across the country has really just kind of driven home that point that performance engineered mixtures, when you start doing this process and incorporating PLCs, it really works to lower our carbon footprint while also being cost effective and ultimately giving us a better, better mix for paving and giving us a better mix that's gonna last for however long we want the, the pavement to last. Speaking of, of that pavement lasting, um, if you're gonna make an argument for concrete over asphalt, that's gotta be your basis, right? That's gotta be your foundation for that argument? I mean, it's one of the foundations. I mean, we have concrete's main selling point is that it lasts a long time. We build concrete because we want a pavement to be there and not have to hold, have a whole lot of maintenance for many years. And so to get that, you gotta have that good mix and got to have a good design along with it. Right, right. Well, okay, well, that's a good segue into something that we're going to do diplomatically and, and delicately here. But on the political side of things, um, you're trying to take a product and promote it on the fact that it takes, that it lasts 30 years or, or even 15 years. The longevity is a primary selling point of this product. What are some of the challenges or, or, or barriers to promoting that to someone who's elected every four years? Yeah, time horizon of politicians can always be a challenge. Um, and that's where it really takes people that have the understanding of you're buying an asset that's going to last a long time. Our infrastructure is built to last a lifetime. And a lot of times we don't have enough money to cover it all. So we can't always just, you know, redo everything immediately when it needs to be done. And so part of that is making sure that we, on a network of pavements, we have the right distribution of you know, concrete and asphalt to make sure that we have pavements that are at different points in their lives. And so we're talking about an asset that's lasting, that's supposed to last that long. You start to have to have buy-in from everyone that you can get a longer lasting asset that might cost you a little more upfront, but over the life cycle, you're going to see huge benefits on the life cycle cost side. And this also translates to the environmental side as well, because we're talking about these things, they're not just sitting there to look pretty, they're sitting there to be used. And when you use that pavement, it has an impact as well. And so I think on the political side, especially, like we've started to see that the environmental thing is something where people do think longer. They do think it's not just the immediate impact of building something. You gotta see the benefit of building it, maintaining it and using it. And uh, I think younger generations are really kind of buying into that. And I think politicians are starting to listen a little bit more. And that's what we're seeing with some of the stuff the current administration is pushing out too, so. Right, right. Well, as, as the people that are uh, interested and worried about that become your voting demographic, then such the politics change to reflect that, I believe. <laughs> Absolutely. Is what you're trying to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was much more eloquent than mine. So <laughs> no, that's, <laughs> that's a good answer. I'll take it. <laughs> um, speaking of, you, you touched a little bit on the aesthetic side of concrete. You touched a little bit about the environmental side. You taught me a word today, and I believe it was albedo. Albedo. So let's talk about albedo because this absolutely blew my mind if you've ever spent time in in a warm city whether it be Houston or Phoenix or Southern California albedo is a big deal tell us a little bit about that absolutely so albedo is really the fancy word for basically the reflectivity of, of a surface it doesn't have to be a pavement but I deal with pavements all the time so how much solar radiation or how much the sunlight is basically reflected from that surface and so 
the natural environment, if you're looking at a grassy area, is, you know, has a value. But if we start to build on that environment and change it and build concrete or asphalt pavements, it changes what that reflectivity is. And so for an area like a hot city like Houston or Phoenix is a big one, um, they're very concerned with how hot their city is. And so the more energy you can basically reflect out and cool down that city is can be hugely beneficial. So we've some of the data we have from uh, the concrete sustainability hub, they've looked and done case studies. And I think for a city like Phoenix, if you switched all asphalt to concrete pavements, you'd basically see a reduction in heat of about 2.3 degrees Celsius, which may not sound like a lot, but when you're starting to look at it, it can be huge, especially when you're talking about a city like Phoenix that is very concerned with heat related deaths and stuff like that. That's something that they've started to look at. They've actually started painting some of their pavements lighter colors because of this. Um, and so building in concrete is a heck of a lot easier than painting something that <laughs> may not last very long. So. Right, right. Well, and, and the painting goes far to um, usually makes a slicker surface, usually doesn't last very long. <laughs> yeah, there, there are a bunch of different products that have come out and they're trying to get it basically what concrete does inherently. And it just kind of makes me laugh from the concrete pavement side because I'm like, you know, you could have just built that with a different material that lasts longer. You wouldn't have maintenance with it. It'd be great, but, you know. Yeah, they're working really hard to not do concrete, it sounds like. They're I, twice the work to not do concrete. In some cases, yeah. Some cases they just get stuck in their ways, and, you know, mm -hmm. it's easy. In some ways, asphalt is just easy. It's what you know, and yeah. it's what you've done all the time. And so using concrete pavements is something a little different. It takes a little extra work. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, sometimes promoting it can be difficult, even though it does have some of these benefits. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, as far as promoting it, Eric, you're doing a hell of a job. Appreciate it. Uh, really appreciated your, your uh, presentation this morning and, and really appreciate you taking some time out of your day to uh, give our podcast audience a little synopsis of what you talked about. I'm sure people have some follow-up questions. Where do they go for the ACPA uh, resources that you put out? Oh, it's pretty easy. It's acpa.org is our main website, and that's where we put out a lot of our stuff. Our sustainability white paper will be up on there, um, should be up there right now. Uh, so that's probably the best place to start. You can find you know, all of ACPA staff contact info there. You can find mine there and reach out if you have any questions. Awesome. Joey, anything else? No, nothing else. Uh, Eric, really appreciate you coming on today. I'm a big, uh, I'm an old paving guy, so I always jump on the <laughs> opportunity to talk about paving. I love talking about paving, so happy to be here. <laughs> all right. Very few times have I learned more in 15 minutes or less, and uh, hopefully our audience can say the same. You guys are welcome. And, uh, Eric, we appreciate it, man. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.